You saw this hitting TJ Dillashaw. That guy's guilty. Everyone, no matter what, he's going to go to a trial right now. You saw this said, too. We have to figure out what this is, what the suspension is, and stuff like that, or figure out what's in the system. It's going to take a, a process. Everyone thinks he's guilty. Yeah. No matter what, he's guilty. He did it, whether he meant to or not, he still did it. And even if they come back in like two months from now and find out that, you know what, he didn't even mean to do it, someone someone messed up somewhere else, it wasn't even him, he's still guilty. It's still over his head that he did that. Even if even if he was it was an accident, he's still guilty. And same thing with these other people in, in, in courts and whatnot. These guys are all guilty. Even if even if after twenty years this guy gets out of jail, he's still guilty. He's been, he suffered the crime. He's not going to get a, he's a job again and stuff like that. Like uh, the world is such. A, I'm sorry, we're going different, going all over the place right now. There's I'll bring a, it back. I'll bring it. Yeah, back. thank you very much. Bring it back. No, 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 the world. You're about to. Well, the world is the world is. Uh, we try to act like we are um, a society that is forgiving, but we just want to cast judgment as quick as possible. And we want to stick with our guns, and we're, we're willing to stick with our judgments and move on from that and cast a judgment and move on and not even know the real facts. It's Dude, it's the Twitterverse that we live in. People are too worried about I told you the other day. Someone put an article about – in our own company, someone put an article and just put out information and – didn't really just put out information. They didn't do any fact checking. They just heard something, copy pasted, put it out there. We did an article. We do articles that are better because we sit there and know the facts. We do the information, do the research, and put it out there. And it may take longer, but that's more in depth and gives you more answers than just uh, bam, this happened. You know, it's because there's no face to face interaction, man. And these kids are behind this virtual wall. Ah. I mean, it, it's at every level now, dude. Like adults, I'm sure, with their emails and grandpas and grandparents are learning how to text. Mm. Uh, I mean, dude, we're, we're in a society that has to work on being interaction face to face and not behind this Twitter wall. I mean, the great, the great, the legendary Luke freaking Thomas. Uh, I went at him on Twitter, got into a little bit of a debate about how they hate super fights and money fights like my man sitting across from I me right him. now. Um, Luke, Luke is right. But he wasn't happy about how I went about it online and I was killing him. I felt I was right. He felt uh, he was okay with confrontation. But when we were in person, I was like, hey, Luke, what's up? Like, I'm like, dude, if we're jabbing and dipping and diving and doing our things online, and he was like, fuck off. <laughs> he literally said that to me at the uh, the media rounds for UFC Brooklyn. And I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. I was like, oh, my gosh. And eventually we sorted it out. I choked him out, and he was okay with it. Oh, uh, but we sorted it out. And, dude, you know, I'll, I'll fire the shots on Twitter, but it's like, talk to me. Tell me your problems. Let's talk it out. Because at the end of the day, we're going to shake and we're going to be – we're not going to fight about this. But, see, you're like a pot star, dude. You're, you're that type of guy who – has no problem for confrontation. You have no problem, you know, uh, calling people on there. Whether it's bullshit or not, you have no problem, problem calling people out on what you think is not right or call, whatever whatever the case is. You don't mind stirring the pot. Not everyone's like that. People people are sitting there and trying to, to be uh, honest and truthful, and this is the research I've done. This is my hard work. This is, this is whatever. And you're going, well, I'm going to poke holes through that. And they fucking hate that shit. Because I thought about it a lot, and it's like it is be who you are online. And yes, it, 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 I can't go to somebody in, in, in a deli and say, yo, your fucking opinion sucks. What the fuck you thinking? It's like, I don't know this guy. But when I played video games, Call of Duty, would be like, dude, I'm going to fucking eat your oh, babies. Oh, you're that guy? Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, you're Mike Tyson. No, I was okay, G-Unit God. online, man. Oh, okay. G-Unit 99. <laughs> you, all right, so here's the deal, though. Right, so you have no problem to, to to being that guy and busting chops is, and being. Is Twitter a, being not the, a game? We're talking about freaking a sport. I know there's a lot of livelihood and it's a dangerous. The problem. Sport. The problem is this though. Twitter is too real now. Explain. Joe, Joe Rogan just had a podcast, a huge podcast, with the execs of Twitter about the rules and regulations on Twitter. It was him. It was the guy Jack. Uh, somebody from. I don't know if it's HR, but someone that makes a lot of decisions in, in, in the Twitterverse. And then this guy, Tim Poole, who's a conservative. Uh, Joe Rogan brought Tim Poole in because Poole, uh, a lot of people criticize J- uh, Rogan for not hitting on certain questions. Like, Rogan, dude, I love Rogan to death. 
But Rogue is not going to sit there and cause confrontation. He's just going to let you open up and give stuff that you wouldn't normally give to a normal human being. the touch, like get within an inch of the bear. Right. He doesn't like to punch the bear in the stomach. Because no. that opens up a whole can of worms. Right. But he'll talk to the bear, and next thing you know, the bear's talking to, you know, it, he's, the bear's opening the cave door to you, God, and you're, you're getting, getting in. Newsflash, guys, Rogan is essentially a radio host. I know it's a podcast host, but he's a radio host. It's a businessman, you know? He's right. not going to solve the world. I know he has on a lot of, like, nutritionists or people, religion <laughs> or politics or Alex Jones. He's an entertainer. He stirs the pot as much as he can, but he dips it in and he gets out of there. It's it does, a job for him too, folks. It does, well, but he also—I think he enjoys it. I think he enjoys his oh, job very much. Of course, of course. And he does it. And he does but it. He's not saving the world anytime soon. He's and, selling his freaking products. He's <laughs> making it entertaining, but he's not saving the world. He's trying to. Once one podcast at a time. That should be that slogan from now on. You should actually write for them. But that be Pull that, that shit up, Jamie. <laughs> but that, yeah, right. <laughs> but that being said, though. The the interaction between um, the execs of Twitter, Tim Pool, and Rogan, yeah. they brought up so many real topics where you're saying, oh, dude, Twitter's just a game. It's just a game. And, like, for some people, uh, Fortnite is a game. It's just a game. And that's what Fortnite is supposed to be is made for a game. But Twitter has now turned into this real thing where people do real things. People have real news on there. People go on there and and post real topics, and people, because of Twitter, cause them to do certain things like mob mentality, like kill themselves, like do ridiculous, stupid things because other people tell them to do it. I'm not sure if Fortnite does the same thing, but maybe it does. But wow. Twitter, Twitter has gotten real. So where you're sitting there going, oh, you know, I'm going to poke the bear. It's just fun. It's a game. People take Twitter so freaking serious now. I put one post and it was it was called uh, some ridiculous things that I've never heard of in my entire life to, addressed to me, and I'm like, where do these people get this from? They don't even know who the hell I am, but I ignore it. Other people can't ignore it, like your boy, dude. I mean, uh, I hate to go down this, but it kind of shines the cockroaches on their personality. You know, you find out what somebody is. What's the Rocky? When you get pitch, uh, when you get pinched, <laughs> yeah, we're coming, welcome I to my pitches. household. <laughs> it's it's not how hard you get hit; it's how hard you can get hit and keep going. You know, it's like I like to dip and jab and just joke around, and be jovial, uh, uh, juvenile at times. But it's people take it too serious. I know it's their livelihood, but if you can't laugh at what we're doing, it's it's I'm not on a freaking Fox Sports or a CNBC platform talking about uh, the wall and uh, cutting off visas. It, it is a freaking plug-and-play game, in my opinion, for Twitter. It is loose. The, the people that I follow and interact with, uh, half of them are posting things about being stoned. The other halves are posting, like, funny Dana White memes or, like, Boracina saying something <laughs> funny, Ricky Martin memes. It's very light. It's plug and play. When I'm in real life, I'm talking to somebody. I'm not tweeting them about, dude, we got to meet up online. Like it, that's a little weird. But the one thing I have to to call you out on for that is you're go, sitting, go, go. you're sitting there saying I don't mind, you know, hitting the button and, and kind of jamming a little bit here and there. And I I don't do what I got to do. And it, it's it's fun to you. It's it's a it's whether it's a game or not. It's, you don't take it as serious as the next person. But what if you're the person on the other side who all day gets their the jabs from everybody and doesn't know where it's coming from and be like, dude, dude, F you, F you, F you, F you, F you. That's the mob mentality when people get attacked for not doing anything bad to begin with. But if you hit a nerve, and, and again, when I'm talking about hitting nerves, I'm talking about arguing. Uh, Luke Thomas didn't want that pothead that I named earlier to fight Tyron Woodley <laughs> for the 170 belt. He says we're losing pecking order. This guy uh, it was a 55er. He fought Connor. Now he's going to fight for a belt. In my whole opinion, yes, let's see the money fight. That's what we're literally yeah, but arguing the, about. But that, but that, that's his, you're touching his money. You're touching his idea. You're touching his point. And his point is one. valid. His his point is valid, dude. To him, his point is so valid. And to mine, it's like, <laughs> why can't you see both sides? I understand both sides. That's why yes. I love you, Pete, because I'm understanding peck and order. And I told you I would jump on the peck and order island as opposed to the super fight money fight island if I had to choose, life or death. You, ha you have to, uh, in, in order to do this stuff, in order to, to be in this business, um, you have to understand all sides of it. If you can't understand that there's multiple ways 
to to pick a fight or multiple ways to uh, to go through uh, MMA or wh- whatever the case, whatever this world is. There's multiple ways to skin a cat, as they want. They said, I'm not sure if that's legal anymore. I'm not sure if that's that's PC, but they do that. They used to use that as a phrase, skin a cat. That's what they chose. I'm going to choose that one right now. There's multiple ways to do Come that. On, we all know you're not I, that I, PC. I, I, no, I'm, <laughs> I, I, but, but the point is. If you can't open your eyes and grasp that there's other ways to do things and you're not aware enough and not – if you can't respect other people's opinions, then you this is the wrong business for you. And, it, it, dude, we're in a different age of, like, the sport. MMA, like, just hit, like, the the top where it's on ESPN and it's going to get ultimate coverage. Nothing against Hawani or Akimoto or Thomas, but they're journalists, you know. They, they done some radio spots, but a lot of their thing is covering the sport, using exact stats. Our thing is to cover the sport, use some stats to back up our opinions, but more than anything, like Joe Rogan, to make it freaking entertaining. How many times will Joe Rogan forget a fighter that he just watched a couple of months ago on oh pay God! forgot the fight he watched? That oh, guy yeah. is a cram studier. He makes the job look easy, but he, he isn't living or dying with this. He but wants to make it entertaining. But he, but he is passionate about the sport itself. Like He loves the sport. You, you say, you know, I, I don't get me wrong, dude, there's... There's thousands of fighters that have, have fought in, in MMA all across the board. Fair. He has been it's, there since it's, the it's, way it's, beginning. Yeah, it's tough to get all those names right. But you and I sit there, and we know, I would say, a majority of the fighters in the UFC, but then there's still names that pop up on a, on a card, whether it's main event or whatever, I go, who the fuck is that? I don't know who the fuck that is. I try, and I don't know. And it's, it's, it's hard, but you do your best. But the thing is this, you're passionate about it, you'll watch it, and you'll talk about it, and you'll give your opinion. And that's what we do. We do opinions. We're not. I'm not sitting there trying to to be the best journalist in the world, as you said. Like I'm not sitting there and being like, "Oh, I I cracked the case." <laughs> no, I'm just shooting shit like anybody else. That's it, man. We're just talking some talk. I mean, if you guys listen to any freaking radio on WFAN, like Mike and Chris back in the days, or uh, uh, Joe and Evan. It's amazing, man, when there's certain sides and you learn to understand your, your not opponent, but like your co host or partner, and you make, you guys kind of like dwindle together like DNA, and eventually you get to a point, you end the show every day, and you make it entertaining. These journalists are so hung up on getting every single fact and detail right. Well, but they miss the big picture sometimes. Well, again, I'm okay with them trying to get the, the information right for an article that they have to write. That's, that's fine. But when you're when you're having fun and trying to speculate what fights are happening, do you have to get a, if it's a speculation? You don't have to get it right. We're just we're going back and forth. We're debating. That's the that's what's fun about this. It's time to debate MMA and not try to get the uh, to sit there and be nerdy about it. Yeah, be As loose, you like guys. Yeah. Be loose about it. every sport. Look at ESPN. If we have to look at ESPN, what NFL countdown or NFL Live when there's like a round table, what yes. or part in. Uh, uh, pardon the interruption. I mean, I mean, I know those guys definitely like try to get on opposite sides of things, but it just makes it entertaining if there's two different points of views. If yeah. it's the same voice, then it sucks. Yes. Fuck you, Pete. Thank you very much. I appreciate <laughs> it. That was fantastic.